Muy buenos días a todos. Uh, welcome back to the ESC Bubble channel. In this video, we're going to review the eight finalists of Benidorm Fest. The second semi-final just finished moments ago and we are ready to comment on it. My name is Erwin and joining me in today's review video are Joe, Sean and Isaac. The first song we're going to discuss today is Blah Blah Blah, performed by Miss Cafeína. This song, I think, really elevated live. Um, I have to admit, originally, it was one of my bottom bank songs. I found it a bit annoying, a bit repetitive. But one thing from Benidorm Fest this year is that the staging has massively changed my opinion on quite a few songs. The ones I liked weren't as good and the ones I didn't like were really good live. So this is an example of one of those. I didn't love it before. The staging was really good. They're really likable on stage. It's fun. It's catchy. Um, and before semi-final one, I thought it wasn't going to qualify. But the second I saw it, I thought this had a chance and it's made the final. I don't expect it to win, but um, I think it will do fine and it's a nice addition to the lineup. Yeah, this is one of the songs where I was really surprised that the fandom wasn't talking about when the songs were released initially. When I heard the songs, I put this down at my number two. I thought the chorus was really catchy, really impactful. And yeah, I think semi-final one was the weaker semi and I just couldn't see a scenario where it, does it, where it didn't make it. And I've never, ever, ever said this, but thank God for the juries. Miss Cafeina is in the final. Let's put that into points. How many points for blah, blah, blah? Isaac? Six. I'll go seven. Joe? This was really classy. I'm giving it a nine. Sean? Seven. Next up, we have Sofia Kohl with Here to Stay. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is that outfit, because that was quite a choice. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thanks, Sean. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I just believe that uh, Daria Kinzer did the outfit change for everyone ever coming after her in Eurovision. And I think it's, that's like a little bit seen already and it's a bit dated. And uh, I know that there was, from the beginning, uh, from the moment that all the songs were released, there was like a whole bunch of buzz about this song uh, across the Eurovision fandom. And I struggled to understand why. Uh, if this gets played at like Euro Club, which it probably will, like I'd probably jump to it the same way everyone else is going to, but I wouldn't put this song on by choice. Um, regarding the performance, like Sophia really gave it her all. Her dance moves were, like very slick, uh, but I just can't get rid of the fact that like the song for me is a little bit outdated. It's not that interesting to me. And also Sophia was struggling singing that song in some specific parts. I'm glad she qualified because she was one of the best ones in semi-final one, but in the final, I don't really think she stands such big of a chance at winning. And also I hope that she's gonna fix that last note. Well, I think, um, honestly, the, you, like you struggle to understand why there is hype around this. I think really it boils down to it's very Euro fan coded. You know, Sofia Coin knew yeah. what she was doing, getting Nacho Canut uh, in on the action uh, here. Uh, and, you know, props to her singing in three languages and including that killer line for all of you that don't speak Spanish, uh, which uh, <laughs> is definitely going to be shouted multiple times in Euro Club this year. Yeah. Um, honestly, when I saw the fan poll, I thought this was going to be a lot worse than it was. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but like it was still sort of lacking something. I think the the time bell staircase, I think, didn't really help because she was kind of getting out of breath, like going up and down it all the time. And then there was the costume change and then there was like all the dance moves that I think she sort of, you know, it felt like she was a bit under duress doing them, to be honest, like compared to some of the other acts. Um, but ultimately, what sells this song is that it has a good studio version. And I think, you know, what put it through is ultimately that, you know, it's getting people talking and, you know, ultimately it might not win, but it is going to be a fan favorite for a long time. Let's turn that into points. I'm going to kick this off with a five. Joe? I still have a bit of faith in this. I'm going to give it an eight. Sean? Six. Isaac? I really like the live performance. I'll give it an eight.
Next up, we have Maria Pelae with Remitentes. My favorite by a landslide. And I know, I know, I know Spain has flamenco PTSD. We get it. You're not sending it to Eurovision, but please let me enjoy it. This is the best song for me. And I think so many people I've spoken to in Spain have this as their number one. But because of this, of the flamenco PTSD, it's like they're all in a bunker, hiding away, telling the people, oh, Maria Pela is my number one, but please don't tell anyone, okay? Um, I had no doubt this was going to the final. I, I'm gonna be honest because I can, I, I can criticize my favorites when they don't do it well. Um, I don't think the staging was the best. I think it was a little bit inconsistent with the whole act, but this is still, leaps and bounds, the one that, in, in my opinion, Spain should send and Spain should be like, listen, we don't care. This is the one we like and you're just going to have to watch it for three minutes on May 11th. But that's just my humble opinion. Honestly, I, I just need a moment for flamenco PTSD. I think that that's one of the best things that has come out of this national final season so far. I could uh, I could name at least three people I know who will probably be diagnosed with that like straight after this show. <laughs> like, <laughs> given and you make a good point, Sean. Like, given how um, the, and I'm going to use the L word, the locals reacted to AIA by Blanca Palama, which we raved about this time last year. You know, I did have my reservations about this sort of. I can see you shaking your head there, Evan. You know exactly what I mean. <laughs> I, I did have my reservations about what would happen if this did too well, but I think we're in the situation now where Maria has just been on stage and she has given us Pura España Cañí. Like, she might as well have been performing it, like, next to a bull poster, like, on a Spanish motorway with a mao in her hand. Like, it was so... Everything was there, like, the cross symbology, the, the naked male dancers, like, there, was, there wasn't a note out of place. Um, like... The rhinestone dress, like everything was brilliant. And like the, the symbology of the song as well. Like there's a whole Reddit post that I think we should definitely be linking to that just sort of details all the like because it's seeped in like civil war and sort of Francoist imagery. And basically the message of the song is like we need to learn from history because otherwise it will repeat itself, which is ironic given the whole Blanca Paloma comparison, but like I, I could talk about this for ages. This is exactly why I have a Spanish degree. I want to study this song. I want to play it like 300 times now. I absolutely love this. Well, we'll be your last one for voting then. We're going to start the voting with Sean. Out of 10? It's a 9 from me. Isaac? 5. I'll go 6. Joe? I can't not give this a 10. Oh, wow. We got to the fourth act, and that's Angie Fernandez with Second Soy. Yeah, so before the live performances, this was around my top five, but they were all kind of neck and neck. However, when I saw this live, it's become my clear winner. I absolutely love it. I think the song is really strong, but she completely sells it. Um, she's just so charismatic and likable. And I don't know, there's just something about the way she performs it that's different from everyone else in this selection. It really, really stood out to me. Um, and the sort of, the uh, guitar solo in the bridge is there. She stands there sort of hugging the two backing dancers stood there. I don't know why, but I found that really effective. Like you'd expect that to be the sort of most action filled moment, but she just stands there with the LEDs behind her and it works so well. Um, it, it came close to winning the first semi, and even though it didn't, I still think it has a chance, and I would love to see this uh, representing Spain. I agree that this was just like something else, because Angie, she elevated this to like a whole new level, and uh, her vocals are just brilliant. She reminded me a little bit of uh, a singer who competed in the Serbian national selection back in 2009, Cveta Majtanovic. Uh, they have a very similar look and they're both very strong vocalists, but like, that's about it. Nothing, like not comparing the two songs, they were very different. Um, 
I thought that uh, Angie and uh, her like all female band they really brought power onto the stage, and uh, the song was pretty good as well. The energy, the performance, literally everything was like completely on point. And during the performance, you could actually hear the audience like how much they were loving the whole thing, how much they were screaming, how much they were shouting, applauding, etc. And uh, it most definitely deserves a place uh, in the final. And I think that she's going to do quite well there as well. Probably not win, but she's going to be, she's going to be way up there. Out of ten, second sorry. Isaac, nine. I'll go with eight. Joe, I love the song. I found the performance a bit melancholy, but it's still getting an eight. Sean? On the opposite, I hated the song, but I thought the performance was epic. Seven. We're halfway through. The next act we're going to talk about is Jorge Gonzalez with Caliente. 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 The, the, I mean, come on. This was excellent. I was never crazy about the song. Cover your eyes and cover your ears, because what you're about to hear is, I think this can go to Eurovision and get a top 10. It probably won't, because the way we saw the results tonight, he's probably gonna release a single with Tanjungueiras in solidarity of their jury scores at Benidorm Fest, and obviously the people loving both of them. Um, yeah, the, the, the scores remind me of Tanjungueiras, low jury scores and high with everyone else. This was great. I thought it was very oily. It was very... It was very Spanish, but in a way that feeds the stereotype. Because when we go to Eurovision, you know, the, the locals didn't get Ea Ea. Maybe because it wasn't Spanish enough, but they would get this. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say this, to me, this is better than Chanel. Yes. I think there could be some improvement. I thought the choreography was a little bit too camp and too... too camp, let's leave it at that. But this can go to Eurovision. I love it. I just want whatever Sean was having tonight because I don't think we were watching the same performance and we're not listening to the same song. <laughs> Cheers. Um, because for me, this entire thing was just way too cringy. I think that Jorge was giving everything that OGA Spain wanted to get on the Benidorm Fest stage, but that's about it. The song is something that Ricky Martin probably rejected about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, refused to record it, and somehow it got to Jorge. Um, it also has some beats from another song that was also in the Spanish national selection a couple of years ago. It was performed by Maria and it was called Muerdeme. And I don't know, it's just like a whole bunch of things, but like done in like much, much I don't know, worse way, in a way. The only thing that was good was Jorge's vocals, because it's a fact, he's an amazing singer and he's always gonna bring an amazing vocal performance. But just everything that was going on on stage, it looked way too forced, it looked way too desperate. And let's be honest, he's not gonna make it to Eurovision. He's probably gonna get played in the Euro Club, but that's as far as it goes. I'm sorry. Caliente, out of 10. Sean? Eight. Isaac? Yeah, we've seen this all before. It's a five. For me, this is a two. Joe? Um, all I could think watching this performance was uh, give your meat a good old rub, lads. Uh, I'm giving it a six. Next up, we have Almacor with Brillos Platino. Brios Platino. Okay, so Almacor, like, he's clearly got many years ahead of him. Like, you know, he's only just started recording music. You know, he has a brilliant song out uh, called Pop Tech, which sort of stormed the viral charts just before Christmas. And then he decided to enter Benidorm Fest with a song called Brios Platino, which for all intents and purposes is a carbon copy of that song, but just like a little bit worse. Um, and this performance, like, when I saw the press poll today, I was thinking like, okay, I don't really like this sort of Spanish music where it's like, you know, it's a 
kid in his 20s and he's sort of not enunciating like he's got that sort of like andalus but it's really pronounced uh over like a really heavy beat it's sort of the spanish sort of early tananai you know brilliant producers behind what is honestly quite a bad singer then that that press poll came out and i thought oh actually maybe he has something maybe the hype is well founded then we saw the performance and quite honestly i i mean i've still not recovered like the, there was just nothing there there was no vocal prowess there was no staging i think kind of luckily because he did sort of give off that sort of you know happy go lucky blanco you know might kick over a flower display if the sound doesn't work uh, so we can be thankful for that and then some like really jarring like video game graphics in the first verse that just served to kind of highlight the fact that this was a cobbled together performance and he didn't really know what he was doing you know he was just it was just having a good time like you know who cares if he can't sing he's not winning this but he's having a good time yeah i mostly agree with everything you just said to be honest um i did think the staging was quite cool though i mean that sort of ai type effect we've seen a few times now it was uh, quite similar to peter poda from esti lao um but the thing is i didn't feel anything while it was on i thought it looked cool the song's okay and the vocals weren't great so overall i kind of just felt a bit cold when it was over i mean initially when it started i thought this could be it looked like it was going to be interesting and not exactly sergey uh, lazarev but that sort of you're the only one the way it starts and you know there's going to be visual stuff happening and gave me that vibe and then it just didn't happen um yeah i don't this is a letdown and i now hope it doesn't win and i don't think it will after that performance but it's it's it's, it's still okay yeah bridges platino out of 10 joe how the mighty have fallen this is getting a four sean can i just say on spotify he sounds like bad bunny but tonight he sounded like bugs bunny <laughs> it's a six from me Isaac? Yeah, I'm giving it a six as well. I'll give it a six as well. Second to last, we have Nebulosa with Thorra. Now, for me, this was perfection. Okay, I've been listening to this song on repeat since it was released. I speak Spanish fluently and I just love the way that this song is written. I love everything about the lyrics. I love how in a way it's daring and part of me really wants this to win just to see how the EBU is going to act towards a song called Torra. The performance was everything I wanted it to be, like the entire like brothel kind of feeling to it and with the lead singer being the madame having her to dancers <laughs> the whole thing the whole story behind it it was so so cleverly done it worked so well on stage i was so glad that they won the semi final they probably won't win the final but i'm just so glad that they're there and i'm 100% sure that they're going to be very close to that top spot but regardless what happens in the final like this is probably going to end up as my number one or number two most listened to songs in 2024 on my Spotify at the end of the year. I just loved everything about it. Na, 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 una, fada. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> listen, I agree with almost everything that you said. I love this song. I love the staging. I love Nebulosa. I would love to see this go to Eurovision. I would love to see two naked butts at Eurovision. I would love to see how the EBU would react to a song that that is called Torra. I love everything about this, but facts it was a big don't but. lie. The her vocal it was performance so nearly there. was not good. Guys, we have to be realistic. She didn't hit many of the notes on the pitch and key. She gave me Serhat vibes, but that doesn't matter because this isn't a song that needs vocal perfection. This is a song that needs a good performance, that needs a theme. She has that. And most importantly, my takeaway from it was the audience singing so loudly to every line that she was singing. 
I I don't know why why all of this bala bala bala, but I I just think that she did it. She 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 needs to sing on the pitch and key. That's all. Did it stop Serhat from coming top ten in the televote? No. Do I think this can t- come top ten in the televote at Eurovision? Maybe. And to be honest, with the way things are going now at Benidorm, I wouldn't mind seeing this win. After the semi-final yesterday, I was like, probably not. But I, I, I don't mind. Maria Pelaya is not winning, so why not? Let's go, Thora. I don't mind. Just please. Um, I, I think what they need to do is because it, it sounds very low for her register actually. I think they should higher the pitch a little bit so her register would be a little bit more comfortable singing. Like that, she can hit the notes because when she was getting when she was hitting bum notes she was a semitone higher than she needed to be. So if they hired the key a little bit, I think they could fix it. And we're good to go to Eurovision. I, I like, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing this at Eurovision. That's all. Let's score Thoda out of 10. I'll kick it off with a 10. Thoda out of Joe? 10, 10 puntos. Sean? Seven. Isaac? Yeah, I've got mixed feelings. It's a seven. We got to the last song, and it's Dos Extraños, performed by San Pedro. I really don't understand this song at all. I just don't get it. Um, it's Everyone seems to love it. And to me, this is exactly the kind of thing that doesn't work at Eurovision. It's pleasant background noise it's it's nice but it's not made for the stage at all um even before the live performance people loved this when the songs initially came out i thought it should be completely bottom of the rankings and the odds and it was actually at the top and now after the live performances it's still at the top um it, it won semi two by quite some distance i just don't understand at all like the only example of a song which initially I thought of as sort of pleasant background noise that went on to be really good live is Salvador Sobral. He won Eurovision. I don't get that vibe at all from this though, and I can't think of any other example of something like that. Um, his vocals were a bit off as well, and the staging was fine. No problems with that. I just don't think this is a song for Eurovision, unfortunately. If, if after all of this, San Pedro ends up winning. And by the way, it is utterly camp that he has called himself a literal saint. I will give him that. <laughs> um, if he does end up winning this and going to Eurovision uh, and then like ends up having, let's say, a Blanca Palomification, like storming it with the juries and then tanking with the public, then I will eat my words. But quite honestly, I think the general theme that we're getting from this year, and there are members of ESC Bubble who will back me up on this, is that it's going to be a mad year at Eurovision, probably given what looks like he's going to win the national finals, say in the Nordics and the Baltics and like, you know, kind of everywhere else. So we are going to need something very classy and sort of, you know, something you can sort of listen to while holding a cocktail in your hand and like not a pina colada, you know, to sort of cut through the madness. And I think San Pedro could be a stroke of genius from Spain. Like ultimately, I do think they will need to change the staging if this does go to Eurovision because um, like I was worried when it's, thank you. Um, I was worried when they said that there were going to be dancers on the stage and like the sort of the dynamic did give me sort of, it was half like Amsterdam red light district sort of half naked attraction, uh, which is not great, but they sort of did it in a way that like didn't distract from the fact that he is clearly a very charismatic performer who can deliver what is actually quite a difficult song to sing, particularly in a very damp acoustic, like let's not forget that's a basketball arena half the time, you know, it's not made for live performances. And I think he like, you know, if he can do that and, you know, please people as much as he did there, you know, he came second with the public, they clearly saw something in him. So if he can take that to a bigger stage, to like a custom built venue, you know, I think this could definitely cut through the uh, the madness. Los extraños out of ten, Isaac. Five. I'll go with a seven. Joe. I'm going to give it a nine. Sean. Ditch the staging and the penguin outfit and see you in Malmo. It's an eight.
As you can see, the favorite of the four of us is Nebulosa with 34 points, followed by Angie Fernandez in second place with 32, and Maria Pelae in third with 30 points. Now, this is all based on our personal thoughts and opinions. And now let's just try and predict who is actually going to win the Nidon Fest and represent Spain in Eurovision. Joe? Oh, why did you come to me first? Um, honestly, I... I mean, the great thing and also the worst thing about Benny Don Fest is that because we have the, the the scores on the screen, like in the semifinals, we do have kind of an idea of form going into the final. And ultimately, I don't think, while it's going to be difficult to compare the first and the second, like I don't think there's going to be a lot of form change. And I do think we are going to end up in a two horse race between um, Santa Pedro and Nebulosa. So honestly, at the moment, depending on how the performance of the final goes in the running order and everything, which we don't know at this point. My instinct now would say it will be San Pedro. I think Sofia Coll is out, 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 out. I think Maria Pelaya was never in, even though she merit, she should be in contention for a win, in my opinion. So that leaves uh, Nebulosa and San Pedro. San Pedro, is that how they call him? San Pedro. Pedro. San Pedro. Um, I think that Spain wants to test their viral hit and send it to Eurovision. They didn't do that with Vico last year, and maybe some people regretted it. So a part of me really thinks they're going to take the plunge and say Nebulosa. We can only look at the scores in the semi-finals where they're against the songs in that semi-final. The so St. Pedro won semi two by a fair amount, but he wasn't up against the songs that Nebulosa was. So I don't think we can necessarily just look at the numbers that were given. I think also we need to see the running order for the final. But um, I don't think we can rule Angie out either. I still think she's in the chance. But if I'm just going purely off of who I think is actually going to win, I'm going to say Nebulosa. Just thinking about the voting system and how the voting works in Benidorm Fest and how it worked in the last two years, it's not 50-50, let's just be honest. San Pedro got seven 12s and a 10, because that's the only combination of votes that he could have scored the amount of points he scored from the juries. Nebulosa scored a lot less, and it's due to that why I think that San Pedro stands a couple of steps ahead of anyone else in the final, regardless of the combination of songs, regardless of the running order. And this is why I believe that he has a slightly higher chance of winning than anyone else. However, I don't want to count Nebulosa out because their song is literally all over Spain. Their song is the only one where the audience shouted the lyrics to the song from its beginning to its end. And I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen in the final as well. And I just hope that the Spanish people are going to do the right thing and actually vote for Nebulosa a lot more rather than anyone else. Not that it's going to matter so much because the juries are still going to get their own way, but it's worth a shot. Votad a Nebulosa. But I think it's going to be San Pedro. Thank you all for watching. Let us know in the comment section down below whether you agree or maybe disagree with any of our thoughts and opinions. And also let us know how you would score all of these songs out of 10. Also, head over to usbubble.com and let us know who your personal favorites are by voting for them in our poll. I want to thank Joe, Sean and Isaac for joining me for this video. We're going to see you all very soon with our next reaction video. And in the meantime, enjoy the final Benidorm Fest. Adios. Adios.